Okay, it's March. It's Women's History Month. And today for the Google Doodle, they put on Olga Lady Zhenskaya. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her name. She was a female mathematician from Russia. Okay. So I want to talk about what is a partial differential equation. So looking, that, looking at the equation on the Google Doodle, it reminded me of a comment one of my college math teachers once made was that there were no numbers in the math book other than the page numbers. So it's kind of like that. There's a lot of symbols and stuff. So what is it saying? What it's saying is it's describing a, a law of nature, how something changes in time in terms of how something changes in space. And this seems to be a fundamental pattern we see in the laws of physics. They all come in this form of partial differential equations. How something, they describe how it evolves in time in terms of the changes going on in space. So in, in this particular case, that was the Navier-Stokes equations, which model fluid flow, uh, which is the same thing that models um, the weather. And one interesting fact of these um, fluid equations is that they're chaotic, which means if you have two different molecules that start off right next to each other and you evolve them in time, you follow them in time, they start off right next to each other, but then the distance between them gets exponentially farther and farther away. So they may stray a little bit, but then eventually they get farther and farther away and can end up on opposite sides of the planet, starting right next to each other. So um, what that means is that limits our ability to predict the future, especially for any length of time into the future, since the error increases exponentially. And, and from quantum mechanics, we know that we can't know the exact position of all the particles uh, in the world or in your system. There, there's, you can know them quite precisely, but, but then there's some, there's some tolerance. We can say, well, we know it's somewhere in this sphere, and that, that sphere might be really, really small, but that, that's about all we can say. So the analogy is with these two particles that are right next to each other. Because we don't know exactly where the particle was, the error in our initial position increases exponentially with time, and our, our ability to predict the future uh, degrades exponentially with time. So I think you can tie that into uh, free will. You, ask the, you can ask the question like, do we live in a completely deterministic world where whatever the state of the particles are now, that, that exactly determines the future? But because of this chaotic thing, you kind of, you don't know what's gonna happen. So that, that is, a, is a pretty interesting argument for free will that, that it, because of the system is so complicated, you, and due to quantum mechanics, you can't know everything. You, you just have an approximation of where things are, make it very difficult to predict the future. And there's an, al an analogy with the human brain. We have about 80 billion neurons, and each neuron has 100,000 connections to the other neurons. So you have this very complicated system that is so complicated, it's very difficult to make predictions about or understand what it's going to do. So, so it's something that's very interesting that, that kind of argues in the direction of we can't predict what, what is the next thing it's going to do. So there we went from Women's History Month. March is Women's History Month. And the Google Doodle had this woman, Lady Sha, Zhen Shakaya, something like that. Uh, oh, her contribution was she was able to show that when you model these Navier-Stokes equations on the computer in a certain way, something called the finite difference scheme, that as, you, as your model gets better and better, as you have more and more little zones, you divide it up smaller and smaller and smaller, it will converge to the correct solution. But even that uh, still suffers from the same problem of you have exponentially increasing error with time. So you can make pretty good short-term uh, predictions, but there's no hope for long-term predictions. And the same thing applies to the weather. Uh, the weather is a chaotic system, which is why the, the early uh, weather predictions are pretty accurate, but then the farther and farther out you go, we, 
were unable to do it. And thank you very much. How'd you do, sunshine? Good job.